couple of things. I've um, just with the injuries and where we're at. So Chuma, at some point, uh, Doga will go on IR. So as you guys know, the slot that uh, you know, hopefully we're close to getting Matt Hennessy back. So he'll be out. Henny continue to practice. He'll be out there today. Um, brought Jared Bernhardt back. He started his uh, window, so he'll be better back at practice. My hour to return, and then uh, technically Justin Shaver too. Even though he'll go to the practice squad, still takes one of those spots. So we had two spots. Those guys are where they're at, comfortable enough for farther enough long in their rehab that we can get a look and assess them these last two weeks. Um, so that's kind of where we're at there. And then at practice today, we're still pretty, pretty healthy. Um, Elijah Wilkinson, he'll be on the injury report dealing with the medical thing that came up with the calf uh, after I talked to you guys on Monday. We'll just have to monitor as the week goes on, but uh, he won't be practicing today. Is that the knee? Not technically, and again, I don't want to tell you anything wrong, but it's something that we're monitoring. It wasn't something that didn't show up right away and something like that, but I just wanted to put context to that because on Monday, when I, the information as I had when I got up here or wherever I was back there. So when he pops up on the injury report, just trying to provide context. Uh, just to actually start, I mean, J.J. Watt announces he's retiring. You saw him just a, a, just a few times, I would imagine, in your yeah. career. Like, um, he's got a great career. Obviously, uh, everybody saw Sunday night. You know, he, he made some plays in critical moments. He's had a Hall of Fame career. Um, he had a lot, a lot of good battles uh, that our guys had against him when I was in Tennessee for, for a long time. and. I guess our guys are looking forward to the challenge of, of going against him on Sunday. What, what do you remember most about going against him? Is there a specific play that stands out for both? Well, I mean, it was a, you know, a lot of back and forth over the years. Um, so those you know, down years in Tennessee, you know, he he was a nightmare. Uh, as we came, a lot of things that thought towards the end of it. We had those guys, we had, there were some great battles, and he was certainly a challenge. And um, Found different ways to try to limit him because he could wreck the game. A lot of chips thrown his way, a lot of different things. I'm sure, he has his own version of him, but uh, he's a great player and obviously been part of the NFL for the last decade. Yeah, they were. Uh, Coach Wade was just on the radio talking about uh, how they could do so many different things with him because he was, uh, you know, a smart player, could go to pass. Play to run on his way, go inside, outside. Was that versatility a part of his game that people appreciated? Yeah, I mean that middle part of the decade. I, I, mean, I don't know. There's been a lot of great players come to the league, and he's certainly at the top of uh, one of the biggest challenges the game plan against. That's for damn sure, because uh, he could do it all. You know, affect the run, affect the pass, game changing plays. Whether he hit the quarterback or tipped the ball, uh, yeah, he made a lot of them. He made a made a. Good number of plays Sunday night, too. And um, Coach uh, Cliff was trying to weigh uh, McCoy, if he can get him back health-wise, and uh, Trace McSorley on what they yeah. what they got to do at quarterback. Yeah, uh, as well at the monitor at the week. They're two different players. Uh, Colt's been around for, for a while, very smart player, a very efficient passer. Trace, you know, the way they used them, uh, they were effective. Some things, I'm sure, you know, depending on what they decide to do, you know, there's – you're facing Colt, certain things you've got to make sure you're prepared for. And then Trace, you know, some of the stuff that we've seen that I'm sure they'll they'll throw at us at some point, D-led, you know, some of the quarterback run stuff, the four-by-one stuff you see, you know, as, as he's trending around the league that uh, we got to be ready for. Because he can certainly, McSorley can keep the ball and hurt you that way too. Uh, next week, is Felipe still in protocol? He's in the protocol. Okay. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it's no different than it was Monday. Yeah, and, it, and Mike, you know, you've been here for two years and uh, uh, how we address that. So uh, we'll monitor throughout the week, but more likely than not, he won't be uh, ready for Sunday. More globally, because everything is going on again, mm -hmm. too, how, how do you approach your players to talk to them about self-reporting? Since that, you know, he, it seems like he did that on Monday and having those conversations. Yeah, with Mike, uh, you know, I, I know that the issue with, you know, it's obviously a conversation out there for the league, and I, I just I'm not comfortable commenting on anybody else, else's situation because I don't know all the variables to it. 
I just know how we handle things, not that, and I don't want to come off sounding like, oh, we, we've got the answers. Uh, nobody's got all the answers on anything. Uh, if you do, you're pretty delusional and arrogant. But just in how we try to handle things with our own players, you know, we, we had a lot of, lot of conversations. Our medical staff, performance staff does a great job with that. Uh, as every team, you, you take it very serious. And certainly here, safety of the player first, and you know, how it affects the team. Uh, but their individual safety and health is priority number one. And that's usually been the case. People I've been around. No, just, yeah, I just wasn't sure how those, I meant specifically with the Falcons, how you approach those conversations, whether that's like you have that conversation yeah, those like are, they those want to everything camp. we do when we, you know, uh, how we address our players, certain all, all kind of different issues. Uh, you know, those things remain private, but certainly acknowledge a lot of things that come up that can, you know, not just injuries, but things that maybe come up off the field. Uh, there's a lot of things that are going on, and, and as you guys know, life outside of here too. So those are there's a lot of conversations we have. Uh, you know, we care deeply about the individual and what's a tough profession, as you guys know. Um, but yeah, that that'll that'll never change as long as I'm here. The uh, position switch moving Avery to the offensive mm -hmm. side. How do you think that he's done there? He he's been seemingly he's been productive. productive. Yeah, he's a versatile player. Uh, he's done a nice job on the punt returns this year. You know, he's been a big part of our, our team, and uh, his role continues to expand. And, and he's a fun player to, to work with and coach. I still think it's pretty impressive that a guy can do that. The role he was forced into last year, playing DB, playing the nickel spot, you know, being a returner, making the switch to offense. He's been ready to go if we had gotten down, got close to one game, having to finish it at corner. Uh, you know, I think Avery's had a pretty damn good season. Oh uh, yeah, Coach. Um, just revisiting the the Desmond and uh, Drake, uh, you know, uh, connection. Mm -hmm. uh, you, what's the ceiling there? It looks like uh, they got something going here. Starting early. Well, on. You hope it continues. I mean, that's when you've got young players, and certainly we've invested a lot in Drake. Um, you know, it's good to see that pay off. I mean, there's certain chemistry that naturally happens between quarterbacks and, and receivers or tight ends. And, uh, you know, the last couple of weeks, I think you've seen that. I think a part of Drake's game is that he's continued to grow. There's some things he's worked through. Uh, you know, as painful as they've been to him and, you know, man, you know, they affect the game. I mean, I've seen a lot of young guys that they can't recover from that. And I think that's what's been unique about Drake uh, to go in there and, yeah, he made a mistake. You know, it happened. Uh, Marlon got him again. And, uh, you know, obviously took the sleeves off and went out there. He's not, you know, he doesn't sit there and hide from it. I mean, you see some guys and they don't want the ball to come their way. Drake's the opposite. You know, goes out and attacks and he'll continue to get better. And same with Desmond. But it is nice to see that chemistry pay off. How do you, uh, I saw that when kept watching it. I don't know what else he could do. Because Marlon winds up and gets a full punch in there, and that's going to be hard to hold that. I yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different things that we – yeah, we, we ball security. I mean, there's a lot of things that um, – too, you know, guys are – your bodies are built different. Some guys are long levered, and they thought the sleeves were an issue, the way you, you, you hold the ball, you know, the pressure points you put on the, on the football, you're going through traffic. Certainly, uh, you know, lesson learned from New Orleans. And it was different, but the same result, right? And Evans, where he got him and – in New Orleans, mm -hmm. and then Marlon was like clin peanut clinic, peanut, peanut Tillman. Peanut, yeah. I mean, it was a haymaker. Like you're in the ring, uh, that, that's, that punch is going to hurt. But again, we, it's our job to make sure uh, we take care of the football. I did appreciate it. I mean, he tried to find a solution. I thought it worked well, whether it was a, had a placebo effect or not. I thought the rest of the game, I mean, he went back in, inside and it didn't, didn't, wasn't an issue. Talking about Drake, when you say like that, it's unique to recover from something like that, and this is a guy who wants the ball to come his way. Is that something that you can find out about someone even during, during like the pre-draft process, or is that only something you can learn about someone in the heat of the moment? Well, certainly, what you try to study and see him in adverse situations. I mean, it's a lot of things that come up. Uh, you find out a lot about people, players, coaches. Uh, through that process, you're trying to evaluate that. That's you know, we have a great scouting staff and trying to collect all the information. And then, and then a lot of times people say a lot of things in the interviews. They're going to tell you what you want to hear and 
whatever little cameo they're doing, right? They're going to have all the right buzzwords, but you just look at, look at them over the long haul and then watch how he reacts. And uh, certainly been pleased with that. There's some things for all of us we need to improve, but I, I do appreciate his mindset because some people, yeah, they may say, hey, you know, I want the ball, and then you can tell by their play, and the way they're playing, they really may not want the ball. You see it happen in a lot of sports, too. They're like, oh, I hope the ball doesn't come my way, but uh, he's got an aggressive mindset. Uh, he's fun to coach. So continue to see improvement, and we're really excited about him. Switching over to the, the defense real quick, um, big picture with this defense, what do you kind of feel is the key to their development in the last month and a half in regards to kind of those critical down situations? And um, when you see them in practice, what do you kind of see from that group and the steps that they've made? Yeah, a lot of it comes down to situational awareness. You can tell them to, uh, I call four point swings, uh, certainly down the red zone. Um, you know, where you're, again, trying not to, to give up explosives. Um, you know, those are things that have happened at times this year that I thought we've done a decent job. Um, New Orleans got us, um, you know, Baltimore did, but being able to rally, they make a play, which happens sometimes, especially one on one. It's the NFL. Sometimes it's good on good. Uh, you know, with AJ, he gets Andrews a couple times, they get him a one fade. So they get in the scoring position to be able to, to bow up, no different than Drake. You make a mistake to bow up and got to play every down. And and uh, certainly that's kept us in some games by making them kick field goals. The next step is, like, we got areas to improve. We always do. You know, third down where you're, where you're not giving up points and uh, all that stuff. But that's where it's paid off, certainly the last month. Uh, we've done a better job situational when they've gotten there and making them make them have to kick field goals when they have gotten down there, which has given us a chance to to come back. Now we need to start faster. We need there's a lot of things that we'll continue to work on, find solutions, clean up. We know that. Andrew Usher was a spot that really going into the season, you guys really tried to renovate. I'll use the word renovate that room, mm -hmm. change up. The, how do you feel like what you how, how do you evaluate what you've seen from that group this year? Yeah, there's a lot of things. Um, and it's just, we know, continue, we got to find ways to pressure the quarterback. Um, and it's not just on the, times the edge, it's the coordinated rush inside, too. There's a lot that goes into it. You know, when you, as you're going through rush plans, how you're trying to attack certain quarterbacks, it all goes into it. We know we got to be more productive there. But, the, you know, the growth of some of those young guys and the things that they've seen from, uh, you know, AK and, and uh, D'Angelo, and then Zoe, you know, taking on a different role coming in here. Uh, but it, to get it, to, in my opinion, to have a really top flight pass rush, I mean, there's a lot of coordinated things, and it, it's not just outside, it's inside out too. And whether you're a pressure team and their backers are guys that can rush the quarterback to create matchups, to create protection issues up front, there, there's a lot of things that go on at the line of scrimmage um, pre snap that can affect the quarterback, and we got to continue to to develop and find solutions there. Uh, but those young guys. Yeah, you'd love for a guy to come out as a rookie and have 15 sacks. It usually doesn't happen, and there's been cases. But we feel good about their development. We know we got to continue to improve, and and it's all across the board. In, in terms of TQ, right? Like, mm -hmm. obviously, you guys were having rush issues before he got hurt. But how much does has he actually done this year? Now, he's obviously injured, but how much did he maybe help this year, both with some of those coordinated yeah. rushing and also with maybe taking attention away from Grady? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I think sometimes the effect you have, it depends, again, what you want to do. But if you're in traditional four-man rush, you know, where's the center going to slide? You know, those, those are the games you're trying to match up. So if you aren't getting the slide to you, you're going to be one-on-one. -on -one. And maybe you're not – it's not just the right way. You'd love to win quick. It usually ends up in sacks or, the you know, they throw it away or you're hitting the QB pressures. But the way he was able to collapse the pocket sometimes, which allows you to get him on the edge. And I thought TQ had made a lot of strides there. He's a powerful player. Um, and when you're young and, and you're going through it, Mike, it's you know, I, TQ. Was, he was having a huge impact on us, you know. Regardless, and I think I've said that a bunch about it's not just the stats, the impact he has. Even going back to Kyle, you know, Kyle is rookie year. He had, you know, like I said, I mean, whatever he had, you know, thousand yards and makes the Pro Bowl, and we were a different offense then. You had a veteran quarterback and you know passer, and as you're going through it, and then this year certainly we. I kept saying he had the impact he had on winning, but I think the one thing that's not lost on us and the value of Kyle and TQ both, the impact they had on this team, and, and it's our job. Nobody cares about your problems. Everybody else has injuries. You go around the board, but 
those are things. It's not just me spitting cliches to try to, uh, why is uh, this number down or why I didn't have this many sacks or whatever it is. There, there is an impact on winning. And those guys were certainly having an impact. And, uh, and that's what happens when you have good players and uh, you try to find solutions. But certainly both those guys have been missed. In what areas have you seen uh, Richie Grant have like the most growth in from year one to year two? A lot of things. A lot of things come up. Uh, you know, recognizing certain rock combinations. I mean, a lot of that comes by with reps and experience. There's so much stuff that happens pre-snap now. And things that you want to, you know, you put on the safeties. I mean, those guys a lot of times are they're like quarterbacks back there. Certainly, a guy. You know, I've got a ton of respect for Buda Baker and the impact he has on that defense. And the, you just when you watch the film, you can tell the guys that are. They're out there. They're, they are the quarterbacks. They can, you could hear them certainly on the sideline, but when you're watching film, guys that look like they're they're the calming presence. They're getting in there. They're smart as hell. Like really veteran quarterbacks. They're not m manipulating like they do some other guys. So there's a lot of things. Richie and, and I've seen a lot of year two growth. Him, you know, making plays on the ball. How physical he is in the in the, in the line of scrimmage. Um, a lot of that stuff. So been pleased, you know, with his with his growth as well. Yeah, yeah Buda Baker's going to be out, but Isaiah Simmons, how are they trying to yeah, use him at inside? And, oh. Unique player. They got a lot of speed, he led. Uh, I think Vance Joseph does a good job. They, they, they give you multiple looks because they got a lot of hybrid players, which is where this league's kind of going, anyways. Just with, and we talked about that, the, the talent pool coming out, and the defenses, the way the game's played in space growing up from high school to, to college. So you get a guy like Isaiah Simmons, Stephen Collins. Those are long, rangy guys that can run. And they can put them in the slot, and they play the, the spot. You, you saw with Carolina, mid part of the decade, where Shaq Thompson was out there. They could play like a 4-3 defense and not necessarily go small because he was fast enough to play that in certain looks. You certainly see that with Simmons. And they, they, then you see him on the, on the line of scrimmage. And certain, I mean, he plays a huge role for him in multiple roles, and he covers a lot of ground. Same thing with Zayvon Collins. That's another big, rangy guy that can run multiple player for him on the line of scrimmage. Traditional stack linebacker, they can create matchups and and you know on the line and third down when they're dropping, close windows because not only they have length they got speed, and that's a lot of things about speed and when the windows closing. So those guys do a really nice job and they do a nice job using them. And back to the tackles, just want to make sure I'm not. I mean, we got the sacks, but um, or the hits and the hurries and the knockdown, the kind of uh, pass rush quotient, mm -hmm. uh, or they uh, you know uh, make that maybe a little bit better than it. Than the, the, the flat number on the sacks is, or or they causing enough chaos back there is basically what. Yeah, I mean, I think every you ask every coach, everybody wants more. They want more. Yeah, I mean that's. I guess we're all greedy, you know. When you're in this industry, ultimately you're trying to win and and uh, trying to find ways to improve. If you, if you don't, uh, that's, that's not a that's not a good sign. So, um, yeah, they, they they give you multiple looks. Obviously, they can move Watt around, and you're going to have to account for him on every play. And but with Simmons and Collins and those guys, they can move around. You know, are they a rusher? Or, you know, and the, that that's the game. It's you see it all over the league. These these odd structures on third down, overloads on one side, hybrid linebackers come up where they basically an old three technique rusher in certain packages. They dropping. You know, that's setting the picks up. I mean, that, there's a lot of a lot of stuff that happens, and that's why. Going back to a lot of our guys where I think like a young center like Drew, I don't think people realize all the stuff that's put on their plate pre-snap, even the young quarterbacks. Those are the games on third down that you ultimately will define you um, in those situational, in situational football. And so that's, that's what the fun part of coaching. That's the respect I have for the opponents. Um, and they certainly got a lot of guys that can create those matchups for you, D-Led. I think it was this time last year that, that, that Dean said, I'm paraphrasing, that just that up, up front with the pass rushers, they need more guys that can just win one-on-one -on -one matchups, the four-man rush, get in there and attack. Do you feel like there are more guys who have the talent to do that, whether they're still developing or not? Are we starting to see some guys who can do that as you continue to build up this pass rush? Over the just for us specifically or just around yeah. the league? Yeah, no, yeah I mean – Continue to work on that. When, when you get to that point, when you can win with four-man rush, it's like being able to stop the run and recover too. Right? If you can stop it too high, you're going to be pretty damn good. That means you're up front, 
way that maybe you attack, whether you're a stunt team or you're trying to two gap and, and the shell coverage, you're pretty damn good. If you can win with four, you know, now I mean that's that's a that's a game changer, and I, you know there's very few teams that can do that. The ones that are right now, I got multiple guys that throw at you. Uh, there's probably a pretty good correlation when you look at Buffalo, you look at San Francisco. There's others. I don't want to mean any out or whatever, but it allows you to at least it's just a numbers game. Now you've got seven in coverage, and the quarterback doesn't even have probably two seconds to take his drop and get the ball out. Like those are the things when you get in there and you're really um, you're cooking. Then it doesn't mean that you can't find other solutions, and that's certainly what our job is to try. But that, I mean, you just historically you go back and you look at that '07 Giants team. When I was in Washington, we were a playoff team. We we were a team that needed to pressure, and we were pretty damn good defense. I don't remember where we were, top five, top ten, give or take. I can't remember off the top of my head. But I remember playing the Giants late in the year, and they had that four-man rush. It was a nightmare. Stray hand, tuck inside, you know. Uh, uh, God, I'm leaving out. I can picture him. I mean, uh, um, Troy State. Yeah. And um, – and different guys they threw at them, and it, yeah, and they were able to, to get get there with four. Yes, and uh, we saw that late in the year, and certainly saw it in the playoffs, and you know that was a lot of them make that run. I mean, it's just that those are the examples I give you. I just everybody's constantly working to find that. We're we're working to develop our own guys, and that's certainly a be a huge point of emphasis this offseason. Going back to kind of the beginning of this, like bringing back. Fitzpatrick last week, bringing back Bernhardt this week, mm-hmm. bringing back Schaefer. How much of that is might be able to play him versus these are young guys that can maybe use the three week window, yeah. two week window. Like that's what that balance. Gonna, yeah, that's the balance. You know, we'll see how it looks with Fitz. You know, he's been out for a long time, and you see him, and a lot of it is with the game plan, where your health is at those spots. Uh, you know, everybody strategically, you know, it'd be interesting when you go back and study it, how people used it. Certainly, uh, when you if you're going to continue to play, if you got guys that you're saying, hey, maybe back, and if you're going to, you know, go on and play in the postseason, you, you know, you need to hold on to a spot or two. But where we are right now, there's, if they're further along, further enough along in their rehab, uh, far enough along in their rehab that that you feel good about getting back on the field to assess them, especially if they're young, the practice reps are valuable. And then if they can, we need them to play, or we think they're ready to play, you know, you got to make a corresponding move and. And we, we would do that. Um, we just got to assess, especially with uh, Schaefer. You know, he's obviously on the on the practice squad, and then with Ber- Bernie. So, and then I'll say Bernie in a while. So, Bird Dog will be back out there.